Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. My name is Christopher Ram. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday evening. And as you can see on your screen, the topic for this evening is talking COVID, the disease that just seems not to want to go away. Um, my guest this evening is Dr. Leslie Ram Sami, an advisor to the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, um, he himself a former Minister of Health, uh, and, and a person who is directly involved with the administration of the government program on um, combating the COVID. So, Dr. Ramsamy, welcome to Play Dog. Thank you very much. Um, without being too technical, what is COVID? COVID is a disease that is caused by a virus. You know, a virus is, is, is a, is, is, for example, the common cold is caused by a virus. Everybody knows the common cold. Yes. And it is the same family of virus that causes COVID. Uh, now, once COVID gets into our body, it causes a number of changes, particularly to the respiratory tract. Mm -hmm. um, and from all reports, I think even regular, ordinary people know that people have problems breathing, breathing yes. because of this virus. Because the virus causes a, a form of pneumonia. We have all heard about pneumonia. And it also causes plaques in the in, in the um, respiratory tract. You know how people talk about plaques mm -hmm. in the artery that cause heart problems and so. You get similar type of thing in in the lungs. So it's a viral disease, just like the common cold. Everybody have heard about HIV. That's a a virus that causes AIDS. Yes. So there are many different viruses. And this particular virus is a virus that is that belong to the same family as the common cold. Um, the, we have seen some of its serious sister virus before. Um, MERS? To, to, well, MERS, you remember that one that um, was in the Mediterranean That's area right. and so on. And before that, there was SARS, SARS. Um, in Guyana, 2008 and so on. Um, we, we saw, uh, we were prepared for SARS. It never came, but we were prepared for it. So that's what it is. It's a, this, it's a virus that gets into our body and then take advantage of certain of our disease conditions. So by, by kind of causing some blockage in the respiratory tract, the lungs, and so on, it makes worse some of the existing diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart diseases, and so on. So that's what it is. You, you say it's a disease, and it is. Now, why is it you have almost two poles? On the one hand, people are asymptomatic. You, you, you have it you don't even know and then the same disease can knock someone out, knock the life of someone out within a couple of days. Well, okay. How do you explain so, that? So as I said the virus enters into our body and causes certain changes and among these changes if you have an existing condition like diabetes or heart disease or blood pressure, high blood pressure, um, these changes in our body make these things worse. So there is a high probability 
that if you have one of these diseases and you get this virus, you get infected with this virus, that you will become sick. Yes. And um, some people will get very sick and not be able to recover. Um, for when the original virus came in March 2020 into Guyana, our yes. first um, reported case was on the 5th of March um, when a, a, lady? a lady came in from the U.S. That's into right. Guyana. Patient zero, they call Patient it. Patient zero for Guyana. Um, that, that virus um, was a virus that didn't cause the kind of changes that would make a person who's generally healthy, um, who does not have any comorbidity, it won't cause any kind of um, symptoms because the person's body is able to respond effectively and you will know. But if you have an existing disease, um, your body is not able to adequately respond and, and therefore you get sick. What has happened since then is that these changes that the virus cause to make people with existing disease sick um, it's causing these changes to occur more rapidly mm -hmm. and therefore example the blockage in, in the lungs um, become more rapid and so even people with no comorbidity are now showing some symptoms and, and, and so that's why you see more young people being hospitalized than previously because previously one could very well say that the, the virus affect in terms of its diseases the people with that are elderly because mm -hmm. a higher percentage of the elderly people would have comorbidity than younger people what does you, 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 that's the second time you use that of comorbidity comorbidity means that if you get this virus in addition to the virus you have something else yes. not caused by the virus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's an existing disease um, so and, and, and among the ones that this virus take advantage of are the what we so the so-called NCDs, the non-communicable um, diseases. chronic diseases, yes. um, such as cancer, um, diabetes. Is bi diabetes initially was the number one comorbidity, mm -hmm. um, but now, as I said, it's causing other um, complications. A couple of other terms we hear. Well. Asymptomatic means you have it, but you... It's in your body, yes. but you're not showing any signs of it. Yes. That's what asymptomatic means. Why uh, would that be? Is it because of the person's state of health? Because the person is generally healthy, and the person, um, even though the, the virus is causing some, some changes in the body, it's not enough to make them feel sick, mm -hmm. right? And so often you will go around not knowing, um, not thinking that you need to be tested or so. But the important thing about it is it doesn't matter whether you are asymptomatic or you are symptomatic. You can still transmit the virus. Yes. But once you get the virus, whether it causes any symptoms or not, you can still transmit it. And the efficiency of transmission depends on how much virus is in your body, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that those are the terms, and if one thing this virus has caused, even more so than HIV, is it has made people more aware and knowledgeable about some of these terms yes. that we are talking about. Well, I'm just going to ask you another couple of terms. Uh, you hear of a wave. Yes. Um, the, the first question I, I have is when it, when it started last year, you had um, Dr. Fauci and, and um, Dr. Walensky and so on um, in the U.S. say, but okay, this we're going to get over this, but there's going to be a second wave. How did they know that um, since it was supposed to be pretty new? Yes. 
Well, because virus by nature, right, it spreads. That's how they survive. A virus can live outside of a person's body, right? Um, and so even if you combat this virus by lockdowns, by whatever you do, um, and there is still one or two or two, as long as there's one person with the virus, there is always the chance that it will continue to spread. Um, and that's why Fauci and others were saying that unless we have a, a vaccine or a medicine that could kill the virus, you are always going to be in danger of it re-emerging, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and so if you take diseases, old diseases that we don't have anymore, like polio, like polio if, if we um, don't have a high level of vaccination in our country, there's always a chance that it will come back, right? And so when you're dealing with virus, there is no such thing as it's eradicated unless, unless you have a vaccine or an effective medicine that will ensure that in this population it's totally wiped out. Um, so that, and because at the time there were two things at the beginning, right? One, you had no vaccine. Yes. And right. two, to this day, we have no effective medicine, right? Um, so what people are doing right now in our hospital is treating the symptoms, not treating the virus. Yes. The body, given enough time, is going to develop antibodies to kill the virus, right? So this is the struggle right now. Without an effective medicine, we depend on the body's capacity to, to develop antibodies to, to fight this virus. And that's where the vaccine comes in because what the vaccine does is accelerate in, the, in a person who might already have had the, the, the virus, it accelerates the immune system. And for a person who's not infected, who's never been infected, it teaches the body to to develop a defense because if you don't know your enemy you yes. can fight it what the vaccine does is introduce your body to some part of the virus and therefore if the virus ever come into your body the body knows it and bodies can, can fight it. we've heard of second we've heard third um maybe fourth is there a, a, a limit or, or, or until we get that real immunity from everybody being vaccinated? If, if you do not have, you, you have, I'm sure you will ask me too about herd immunity. Yes. What herd immunity means is there enough of us vaccinated that prevents um, the virus from spreading. And so until you get enough people vaccinated, and enough people with antibodies against the virus, you will continue to have the possibility of another wave. Mm -hmm. There could be one, two, three, four, and things like that. Because naturally, without us quarreling with people, if, if you are, let's say, you know, complacent and you're not going to wear your mask and you're not going to take precaution, but suddenly around you a few people start getting it and getting sick, you will get to your senses quickly, yes. right? Um, and so, so once it starts going up and up and up, people get scared and they start taking some action and then the thing goes down. But then they go back to their old ways and it goes back up. And we saw that in America. We, America before the vaccine, 
had one wave, two wave, three wave, a fourth wave before the vaccine came in. And right now, they seem to have had their longest um, time at the bottom of yeah. the last wave. And, and they are confident that because I think at this m moment, 66% of the U.S. population um, has received have received at least one, one. dose yes. mm -hmm. and about half of the population are fully vaccinated um, they're, they're confident that they're reaching herd immunity and that they're not going to get another wave but there are places in America and in Israel and in cities and, and in Burma countries with high vaccination rate there are pockets yes that still have high rate so you get places like Mississippi and things like that um, so we are trying to get there what countries have done is vaccinate their themselves out of the pandemic and I am hoping that that's what will happen in Guyana too I want to ask you one general question and we'll go um, to some practical matters what do they mean what you people in the science field mean when you talk about a strain there's a South African strain there's the Indian strain okay. and I know now they're getting rid of um, those national descriptions but um, what do they mean by the strain well I think there's a Brazilian strain as well there's a Brazilian strain as well um, so the virus every time it's transmitted and this is not unique to the SARS virus, mm -hmm. any virus, every time they transmit, undergo slight changes. Um, when the accumulation of changes lead to some variation in its behavior, um, then we call it a new strain, mm -hmm. right? It's the same coronavirus but it belongs to a new strain mm -hmm. it, it's almost like um, you get married to a person of another ethnicity and therefore your child is a mixture of the two ethnicities another um, et ethnic group being created yes. and so even though we talk about you know in Guyana um, indo guyanese afro guyanese Amerindians, um, Portuguese, if you look at our population and you start like that, we just say mix. Yes. But there are, because of the initial group of people, we actually have, if you start naming them, mm -hmm. <laughs> you will have many, 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 many uh, absolutely. groups, right? So viruses are like that. The, prob the difference is that in Guyana, you're talking about 750,000 people getting some mixture in between. Virus in one person in one day are billions of copies. Yes. Right? So when you start mixing it up and it changes, you, 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 but it's an accumulation of change that then lead to a different strain. Um, so the strain could, for example, um, would allow a you take TB. But there are certain medicine that will kill the TB um, bacteria. Yes. Um, but then it starts changing, and suddenly that medicine no cannot way. attack that anymore. So that's a different strain of it. And, and that's what we have here. And remember that when we talk about 18,000 people in this country, that we know, we confirm, had the COVID virus. It could be that we had 30,000. Yes. Because there are a number of people, if you're not asymptomatic, and we didn't get to you by contact tracing, that you are not documented. So at the very least, the virus that came in Guyana on the 5th of March, even if we assume that no other virus came here. Yes. That none came from America, none came from England, none came from Brazil. 
um, none came from any place else. That's that original virus is the only one. Mm -hmm. um, by now, it would have transmitted at least 30,000 times. And therefore, when people talk about the variants that, that might have come in, even if none come in, we would have had right in our borders enough changes to have changed the behavior of the virus. Now, the change is not always bad. Um, the change could also lead to a less virulent mm -hmm. virus. But what we see with this particular virus is that all the changes have led to some more virulent virus. And, and that is the danger. You see the note from Trinidad where they believe now that the dominant virus in their country is one or more variants, right? And that's why they are seeing uh, an upsurge of new cases and also um, more rapidly um, progressing diseases and therefore more deaths. Let's talk about our um, more specific stuff. What's your assessment of the situation in Guyana? We still, uh, we, we, we're not into double digit deaths. Um, you, you were telling me that um, we, India had 6,000. Uh, 6,000 deaths yesterday. What was our situation? Well, you know, um, in, in January, I think there were 19 deaths. In May, there were 99 deaths. And you are you are an account. Is, is that cumulative or um? That cumulative. Yeah. For the month. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So it's an average of about three yeah. per day. Yes. Um. But you had less an average of less than one per day. Yeah. In January. Yeah. Yeah. So there are more deaths. Um. It, that doesn't necessarily mean that there are so many more cases. What it means is that this virus, like we have talked about before, has changed enough mm -hmm. that it is causing more serious illnesses in people faster. Um, and so, for example, you remember I said one of the things using layman terms that there is blockage in the respiratory mm -hmm. so you're not getting as much air right if you look at what we use in one day in the covid icu it's more than we use in a month under normal circumstances oh. um so that's the reason why i'm sure you have read it when people were paying attention to india that they ran out of oxygen. That's right, yes. Even in Trinidad, you heard. Suriname, you heard. Brazil had that earlier. Um, because you, part of the treatment of people is we have to force oxygen into their body. Because it's a respiratory. Yeah. Yes, and so you will see people now learning, ordinary people learning uh, terms that um, many people in the health field never address. So suddenly, ordinary people calling me and telling me about the the FIO number for their family, mm -hmm. it's a, a flow rate of yeah. oxygen, yeah. and so on. Um, so, yeah, that that the, the major thing here. Um, there are many other changes, but those are the struggles that that, that we have. Um, given the number of deaths, do you s would you say that we have plateaued, we, we are on the decline, or in fact the, the real danger is yet to come? I would want to say that um, the real danger is yet to come, but it is not inevitable. We can stop it. I have 
seen and I, you know, I've heard people say Guyanese are really stubborn people. They see the thing, you know, this is one of the countries where I see, you know, you get a shootout someplace mm -hmm. and people want to run to right towards it. Right? Yes, yeah. Is what we're doing with the virus right now. Um, if right now you're not vaccinated, and you are leaving home without your mask, know that there is a reasonably good chance that you will get sick and go to the ICU. Um, so, so our attitude, and, and, and even though I start by saying that's what people say about Guyanese, we like to go where trouble is, um, it's the truth is that I've seen it in other countries people don't seem to get it because it's not something you see right mm -hmm. and therefore and, and and there is an attitude in people that it's not never gonna happen to me it'll happen to you right and you want to see it still played out you forget the other countries the fact that two three people die every day right go to the market tomorrow Mm -hmm. I'll go to Regent Street tomorrow and you will see and and it's not like they don't have masks in some countries they don't have a choice they don't have but here you will see people like this they have masks on but they will pull it down yes um, and, and so that's what I mean by it's not inevitable because the things we have to stop it getting worse. The things we need to stop it getting worse, we have in our hands. We can have masks to wear. There is no need for us to get into big crowds and things like that. Why we still have big weddings? Why we still have big funerals? Listen, I want to one place. I passed and I see, I talked they were having some celebration because mm -hmm. I passed three nights yes. and I see these large crowds playing music and things like that and I in fact one night called the task force to interview and I'm talking about 11 13 the night on the fourth Which day is passed off your time yeah yeah on the fourth day I passed during the day and then realized this was no celebration of anything it was a funeral that was the wake and guess what the person died of <laughs> the that's, person that's died an irony that's an irony exactly and so this is what I mean that we are playing roulette with our lives you know when you see this thing with one shot in the gun and they roll the barrel and they shoot. That's what we do every day in this country, many of us. And so I'm asking people that the danger of this virus is yet to come if we continue to be reckless and foolish. Um, so if you are not taking the vaccine and you insist on going out and being with people and in, in crowds and you're not wearing your mask properly, know that that's what you are doing to your life and if you don't care about your life you should care about your loved ones because here is one thing that is happening right now the number of deaths in elderly people still continue we see more young people dying than before but the majority of deaths are still yeah. among the older people guess yeah. what for many of those people they didn't go outside and get the virus. Somebody brought it home. Um, so, so you are seeing that 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 contradiction of more young people testing positive than older people, but more of the older people are dying. And say, and and so this is what is happening right now and, and we have to stop it. The fact that 73 percent 
of the elderly population, 60 and above, from the estimated 2021 population, yes, is uh, are vaccinated at least with one dose. Yes. Tell us that we should not have as many deaths, but. As I was explaining to you about India, with an 80% reduction in the daily number of cases, but yet they had their highest single day death of 6,000. It's because if the virus is there already among people. And because of the lag. The lag, you will yes. see that. So as cases have fallen, yes. eventually in another two weeks, the the number yes. of deaths should also fall. So, so I'm, I'm saying to you that the, the worst can still be ahead of us, but we can stop it, even at this stage. But it's not inevitable. But it's, it's not inevitable. The, the worst case scenario is not inevitable. It's up to us. Um, so I hope that those who are here and have not taken their vaccine, and it's not just <laughs> I don't want to say this, but you know, when you have intelligent people, professionals and so, who give you reason why they shouldn't take it, <laughs> it, 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 it's unfathomable to me, you know. We have people who have seen people around them, so it's not like somebody tell them yes. about it. They see the sufferings of people. And yet they refuse to take the vaccine. Um, this I it's an incredible thing, and 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 so and, and people shouldn't think that it's because Guyanese people are stupid. It's happening all over the world. Um, in America, they are now facing that problem that having had all the vaccine and put it out there, <laughs> yeah, so they that. now have a part of the population, the the right. The far right people, uh, evangelists, and so on, that are not taking the vaccine, um, and 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 these are not people who can't reason. They can. Um, when I hear there is a pastor right now that is fighting for his life, but he refused to take the vaccine before. Mm -hmm refused to talk to his congregation. There is a man who came with a crowd in a, a intimidating way to get us to leave the village. Mm -hmm. He is fighting for his life right now. So, so if these things don't teach people lessons, and unfortunately, you know from our interaction the last few months that the minister, me, a few of us kind of know most of the people who end up at the hospital from various states. In the last two months, I have seen relatively young people who had the opportunity to take the vaccine. In one case, there is a young man who don't have any objection to the vaccine, to take it. But he just couldn't find the time. So he made an appointment every single day for three straight weeks. Mm -hmm. Every single day. The last day he made that appointment, I was in Barbies. I personally made the appointment for him. I was in Barbies, he called me to apologize that he didn't make it. But he said, you know what? I come in tomorrow for sure. Because many think I feel so good. And what happened? That evening at around ten thirty, I was leaving Corriverton. Um he called me to say, well, he definitely not feeling good. And can I send an ambulance for him? He was admitted that night, and one week later died. 
and and I don't want to go through all the cases, but every single day I have a story like this to tell. Yeah. Sorry, but Doc, you know, you're normally a very cool person. You seem agitated. I about am about what what you, apparently you think this is um, such an avoidable loss of lives. It is an absolutely avoidable loss of life. This is a serious virus. It's a killer virus. But guess what? We can stop it. It's absolutely preventable. And the difference with this virus and HIV, HIV need two of us to cooperate for one of us to transmit it. Because mm -hmm. if you have HIV, you can't transmit it to me unless you and I decide to do things that um, will Bring force us together, yes. And so for HIV, it's a personal responsibility, right? For this virus, it's beyond personal responsibility. I have a personal responsibility yeah. to me and to you. Yes. Because it can spread. It can spread without us having to become involved in certain ways, without me having a tattoo, without me mixing fluids with you, and so on. This one can spread. So you have both your personal responsibility and a civic responsibility um, to you, to your family, to your friends, to the community at large. And so, I am confident that sometime by September, close to 80% of us will be vaccinated. But guess what? The rest of them constitute a danger to us. Mm -hmm. Because what we started with discussing, strains of virus, if you allow the virus to continue to transmit, even if it's in a small way, and you have a virus that has changed so much that even the vaccine don't recognize it anymore, then all of us are back to square one. And that's my message also to rich countries. That if you think you are vaccinating yourself out, and you don't take me along, yes. you are in danger. But I, I want to ask you, Doc. Um, we we have the those who are hesitant about the vaccines. You have those who are vaccine deniers. Is there any rational basis for people to either be hesitant or to deny and to say no? I'm not taking. Is there a rational? Basically. There is absolutely no rational reason. So, because we have documented in Guyana the reasons why people um, don't take the vaccine. Because we document every day from our public health workers who go out and meet people and get a sense of why. So, one reason people gave, one early reason, the Guyana, and also in some of the European and and in America, is that the vaccine has some kind of a microchip? Yes. That that is going <laughs> some, to a, some liquid chip in it. Yes. That will allow the government to spy on you. In Guyana, they reinterpret that to mean um, PPP people will spy on PNC people or APNU people or what. So you would know. I'll, I'll yeah, save yeah, this yeah. vaccine for that person. R <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so it can't be rational. That it, can't be it's rational. not rational. And as I explain to people, um, this is not about politics, but if, if you think that there is some reasonable thing that that is so, why would Mr. Granger have taken the vaccine? Why would Mr. Harmon take the vaccine? Yes. Because if you're going to spy on anybody and they are not a political party, <laughs> you're aren't you going to spy on the leaders? No, absolutely. You know, so but, but um, okay, the, the one with the liquid chip is so far-fetched. Even sci-fi can't 
Right. But, but what about that? These the vaccines that have come here might have been rejects from from other countries, <laughs> or that the vaccine might have got contaminated in Guyana because you know we are a pretty careless bunch of people. This is what I would say to people that this country has one of the most successful vaccination program in the world for both in terms of availability well I'm talking about vaccination in general yes for decades yes for decades okay, okay. no country no country whether it's developed country or developing countries have won more UN gold medals for vaccination than this country in my time as minister alone and it didn't happen when I was minister alone, right? Yeah. But in my time as minister of health, we won it seven times. Over how many years? Seven years. For seven different years. Yes. Our coverage has been consistent at around 100%. So when it comes to, you know, certain ethnic group don't believe in vaccine, um, I'm on a television program, so I can't use certain language. That can't be true, because whether we are Afro-Guyanese, Indo-Guyanese, Amerindians, whatever we are, we take we children to get their vaccine. Yes. Do you know that every child at this moment in this country, if you are, if, if you are three years old, you already have had 16 different vaccines. Different? Yes. Um, no, and when you say different, different occasions or different types? Vaccines. Different types for different, 16 different pathogens. Wow. Right, whether it's polio or diphtheria, these things and so, uh, measles, mumps, rubella, um, yes. hepatitis B. We take these vaccines for our children and we don't have that one ethnic group bring their children more than the other. It's across the board. As of 2010, if you are 11 years old and a girl, you would have had 18 different vaccines because we added in 2010 rotavirus. So that's when people ask me, what did you guys do to reduce the annual uh, death rate among children under five years old. Do you know that in 1990, up to about 1991, 2,500 children under five died every year in this country? And now it's under 200. Wow. And you know why? Part of it is the vaccine. So children who used to die of diarrhea because of rotavirus are no longer dying. And that, that must be also maternal health care. Right. And so this country has never had a problem with vaccination until now. And whether this country, because of who we are, can manage va uh, vaccine, could store vaccine. If you look at the global episodes of vaccines going bad, vaccine not being administered properly, you would never see Guyana's because we have done a magnificent job and yes what do you mean by we we as a country mm -hmm. and 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 i was going to that point that yes you could look at the 80s and the 90s and say in the 90s we we approach 100 percent and we were below 70 percent in in the 80s but that had nothing to do with political parties or governments not being committed to vaccine. One thing I can say, that whatever the government we have had in this country, there has been a commitment to vaccination We, we believe in it. We, we see a doctor, we always want a doctor yeah, to see yeah, it. Yes, we believe in it. So this, this thing that is coming now, and then the <laughs> I see big people coming to me and say, oh man, me frighten, me frighten needle. Oh God. When you're taking the two-month-old child yeah. to get vaccine, you're not frightened for them? When I asked you, we just now, you know, um, Dr. Ramsamy, I was thinking of our frontline workers. 
I think the nurses and, uh, you know, um, the various categories of nurses, I think they've truly done an excellent job. No. And I think they need all Listen, the public I have admiration and I have you could find. In the villages, in my speeches, if, if you go to the Hansard, and take my speeches in Parliament on budgets and so, and you go to the global platform where I have been one of the ministers from Guyana who was health ministers, who have been most prominent on the global platform, you would see that the real heroes in this country are our health workers. What they have done with this vaccine program so far, but what they have done with, with COVID and combating COVID yes. in general is just simply extraordinary. That, that's, that's why I was I was inviting you to say right, when you said we I, I really am impressed. Um, now if we we have this issue, um, the deniers, the um, the those who are are the, just the hesitancy. What strategy? is the government and your ministry because you have a lot of responsibility in this uh, on this question of COVID. What is the strategy? Can, oh. Will it extend to making vaccine compulsory? <laughs> making vaccination compulsory. You know the, the um, in the US it came out today that more places could insist on mandatory vaccination. And the US Supreme Court uh, because as a country I don't think we have reached the stage where we need to make the vaccine mandatory as a country because yes. vaccine has always been an optional thing and yes. yet we have had a hundred percent coverage with the children mm -hmm. however i have pointed out to people that every restaurant worker in this country and in fact the public health inspectors could go to the vendors on the street absolutely if you don't have a food vendor certificate, now you can refuse to take the hepatitis test, you could refuse to take some of these tests, or the vaccine, the hepatitis vaccine. Because those are personal. You can refuse it, but you can't get a food vendor's certificate to work public, there. Because that's a public health. Exactly. And so, when I hear that one employer says, you know what, if you don't have the vaccine, you could still work here, but this is what I need from you, that every week you must go get a PCR test, you know, like how we have a Not PCR ever. test to come into the country. Yes. This country has said, if I have, I have rights, right, I could say, I don't want a PCR test, and this country has said, the people who are outside, if you ain't take it, don't you can't it. come. So it's your right not to take it. So how we use these voluntary things um, become important. And, and at some point, our government will say that the PCR test we offer for free will still be free when a doctor needs that test to make a diagnosis. But if you need that to travel, if you need it for, for to, to go to a workplace because you ain't want your vaccine, then that's your cost, mm -hmm. right? Um, I know one of your friends, senior counsel in this country, who went to his workplace and say, everybody got to get the vaccine. And, but because he has given up leadership of the place, and the leader of the place said, the head of the place said, well, we can't force them. And he said, well, that's okay. It's either that person or me. Yes. The person went and got the vaccine. Another person who's pregnant says, well, me doctor said me can't take it. And the person say, well, go get the letter from the doctor and come. Let the doctor tell us. Because there could be medical reason why somebody can't yes. get it. Yeah. Um, and so 
the person just simply went and took their vaccine. Um, so, so there are things that we may need to resort to. I, I do believe that we can persuade a larger number of people. So we started out in November, December. This is long before the first vaccine came to this country by doing a survey and found 32% of the population express um, some hesitancy. Mm -hmm. Whether it was weak or strong, but some hesitancy. And that's consistent with what other countries found. Shockingly, the highest hesitancy was among health workers, mm. um, nurses and so. There are still some nurses that refuse to take the vaccine. It, but after three tries at one nursing school the first time nobody took it the second time two or three people took it the third time 75 persons took it so we will keep working with people and explaining you know there are some people with genuine concerns but like like the chip thing. Yeah. So for example, you have this thing with the mark of the beast. Yes. Um, you know, all these type of things that people use. So we will have to educate people and not give up. I have told people in one community who I know don't vote for the party that I belong to. And I told them, if you don't like me, you better take your vaccine because me will keep coming. <laughs> so if you don't want to see me, take your vaccine and I won't come back. Doc, this question. I, I think most of us have had what our vaccine. Yes. We've vaccinated. Yeah. Um, why do we need to continue wearing masks? You know, at some point we will start advising people, take you and me. We are the only one in this room. I have taken my vaccine. It's over a month since I, I took my second vaccine. Mm -hmm. So I'm fully vaccinated and I know you are. So it is possible that we can be in the studio without our mask. America is go has gone maskless now. Um, and if we really want to return, people tell me I'm tired of this thing and I can understand. But we can return to normalcy. So if I didn't want to show an example to people that if yes. you get out of the house, wear your mask, I would have told you, you could take your mask off. Because if you visit me at my office, say tomorrow morning, I will tell you, take your mask off, it's okay. And that's what we all want. Yes. Um, so if we all take our vaccine. We could return to normalcy. People say to me, are we going to be allowed to go to see the cricket match? Um, which is about a month from now. In, in, in the stadium in Pakistan, I believe, is coming to Guyana. Um, well, this is a good thing. Because maybe if people take their vaccine, yes. the government can consider a proposal that we will allow people to go see the game on the basis that you have taken your vaccine, both doses. So, so there, there is a way for us to become normal again. And if all of us in an office have taken our vaccine, we can reach to the stage where we don't need to wear our masks. Can you see us moving? And I, I wasn't being rude. Right. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to show. Yes. Um, the that, that's my vaccination card. Yes. Uh, it, I've got it both sides. Um, can you see a situation where the we will have to carry that to get access to buildings or, or services? 
is that on the com contemplation? It is happening in different countries. All of these options are on the table. So in certain European countries, they call it the Green Pass. Yes. In Israel, you have that. Yes. Even though most of the people in Israel are vaccinated. And do not discount the fact that soon some countries might require um, evidence of vaccination against COVID-19 for entry. Because you, you know that exists today with yellow fever, for yes, example. Yes. And so these are the reasons. And you know what? The same people that tell me how they scare and this and that, if they have to travel to Jamaica tomorrow, Jamaica is one country that requires yellow fever vaccine if you come from certain countries, they will run to the Ministry of Health to take their vaccine. Is the government going to make a statement that this card that I've just shown you um, is an official document that does allow you whatever exemptions might be prevailing at the time. It is, uh, these are the things that we are um, going to consider um, because it's, it's not like we're going to just wave these things away. Yes. We, we know that as long as there are a small number of people without the vaccine, that not only can COVID come back to this country, let's just say this wave gone down and we, we don't have too many cases anymore, or no case anymore, right? Um, we will always be cognizant that the virus is still someplace. As long as there's a country where the virus is still circulating, there's always a danger that the few people who have not taken their vaccine can allow the thing to come back in. Um, and therefore, we are not going to wait until that happens. Uh, this country will have to have that serious discussion. And so all these things you are asking about, they're all on the table right now. How we decide on this, um, we, will, um, we, we will see with time. But I think we will be an irresponsible government, more than irresponsible. We will be a reckless yes. government. If we don't put these things on the table, um, because we have an obligation to protect our people and we should not be afraid to do certain things. Um, this government has shown some resiliency when, when this country was closed down and the economy went down and we see the risk that you'll die from one or the other. The virus will kill you or people might starve to death. Our economy will be shattered, and so we took some hard decisions. Except that that, that latter part was yeah. very unlikely, yeah. Anna. We, well, but we have to consider yeah. it. And, and so these are some of the things that we will put on the table, and we will make the hard decisions. I mean, people could, we within government will debate these issues. You know, one of the things I always say about government when I was in government is my toughest time was those debates yeah. not the debates in Parliament and so those were easy ones <laughs> it's the one inside yeah. um, and so when you make tough decisions you will not get a hundred percent of people behind you but we will make those decisions the light is flashy so we probably have just about one and a half minutes um, how long do you and does your ministry think this situation in Ghana Realistically, and based on the knowledge. Realistically, I think that once our vaccines keep coming, um, I believe that you will see by September a, a, a large enough vaccinated population that will uh, bring us close to herd immunity. And, and so I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. Um, but that so the vaccines will be there. That depends on our people. Are we willing to return to normal life? If we are, come and get your vaccine now. The, the, the other question I want to ask you, and this, this is personal to me, personal to you as well, personal to everybody. 
we both had um, both the, the, the vaccinations. Um, the vaccine. When, how long does this give me immunity for? Okay. And you have a series of, I mean, you've got Sinopharm, you've got um, Sputnik, you've got AstraZeneca, you've got Johnson Johnson. So how for, long does for this? none of the vaccine we know, we know, I think we are all confident that we all have a year or so. We might need a booster shot. Some vaccine give you lifelong protection, but some give you shorter periods and you need follow-up booster shots. Because this is a new vaccine, That's right. we can didn't go through the def entire hoops of definitively say. Um, but we believe that we will have an extended um, protection, but that it will require a booster shot at some point, one year or two years. That has not been worked out as yet. That's not been worked out. But the, the, the government, and you feel confident to speak on behalf of the government, that when it becomes necessary, the vaccines will be there. This is one thing that co the people of this country can be confident that the government of Guyana will not use any austerity measure when it comes to getting vaccines for our people. Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, I want to thank you very much for this extremely um, informative discussion I've had the privilege to participate in. Um, we hope that you get those numbers up. We get our immunity soon. Life gets back to normal. I want to say thank you, operator. Thank you, viewers. I look forward to seeing you next week. And of course, this program is repeated on Channel 7, WRHM, on Sunday evening. So you can join us there again. Thanks again. Have a good night. Don't press this, I'm lost.